Hello, I'm Angel, and this is History is Fun. To understand how Dayton came to be, we need to travel back to before recorded history. We are going back 24,000 years ago to the last of the many ice ages when nearly three quarters of Ohio was covered in ice. The Plasticine Epoch is known as the Ice Age, a time when many glacial advance intervals and retreat with warmer interglaciation between the glacial advances. The three advancements and retreats that shaped Ohio are, from oldest to youngest, the Pre-Illinoian, the Illinoian, and the Wisconsinan. The most recent and best preserved glacial deposits are from the Wisconsinan glaciation. This glacier entered Ohio about 24,000 years ago. It completely covered the Dayton area and likely towered over 1,500 feet. The massive ice sheet reached all the way from central Canada. Glaciers are not just made up of pure ice and snow. Gravity and the glacier's immense weight cause it to move. Objects such as boulders and rocks in the glacier's path would be crushed and ground under its tremendous weight. The glacier would then absorb the debris into its ice and snow, allowing the glacier to continue to grow as it advanced across the continent. Collectively, this large amount of soil, sand, clay, gravel, and rock is known as till. As a glacier moves, grows, freezes, and melts, it can transform the surrounding landscape. Most of Ohio's visible landscape was sculpted by glaciers. As the Wisconsin and Glacier started its final northward retreat about 18,000 years ago, it occasionally paused and formed a low ridge of till at the snout as the ice disgorged the settlement it had scraped up from its long journey from northern Canada. When the ice margin paused, the till was deposited in the Dayton area, creating hills called moraines. These moraines are still visible in modern-day Dayton, and is how the neighboring city of Moraine got its name. As the earth continued to warm at the end of the last ice age, the glacier began to melt, sand and gravel washed off the glacier and piled up, forming large mounds called cames. Another typical land formation associated with glaciers are kettles. Kettles occur when a large piece of ice separates from the glacier. As soil and gravel settle to the bottom of this piece, the ice itself eventually melts, leaving a ball-shaped impression in the center of the cane surrounding it. When the glacier melted out of Ohio, many large rocks, known as erratics, were left behind. Ohio owes much of its prosperity to the glaciers of the Pleistocene Ice Age. The rich agricultural soils that grow food today also grew food when ancient Native Americans inhabited the land and are deposits brought by the glaciers from the north. Lake Erie and the Ohio River, primary sources of drinking water, transportation, and recreation were created by the glaciers. The state's abundant sand and gravel deposits furnish vital building materials used in roadbeds and concrete. To name just a few. All of these deposits are essential for the aquifer providing plentiful supplies of groundwater. Glacial clays have been used extensively to make bricks and other ceramic products. If you like this video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. That tells the YouTube algorithm to push it out to people watching similar content. And here are two other videos I think you will enjoy.